Hey folks, I guess it's been a while since I did a talking head video. I'm sitting in the camper van. It's about nine o'clock at night. And I uh, thought I'd tell you a little story. For those of you that follow my channel, you know I've been into camping cars, camper vans for quite a while. And I wanna tell you how it started and what happened with my best camper van that ended up, my car got stolen in Japan. So I'll tell you that story. but. I'll also tell you the history. So if you don't know, I've been in Japan about 26, 27 years now, or I've got to Japan 20, about 27 years ago. My first 10 years in the, 
in Japan, I didn't have a car. Everywhere I went, I took the train. I saw a lot of things. I saw a lot of sights. But when you have a car, it's just a different experience. You get to go places you wouldn't be able to go in the, on the train. Trains are great in Japan. You can take the train. You can take the ta uh, taxis. You can take the buses, and they'll get you around to places. But when you're an outdoorsman, you really need a car to get to the far off places, the fire roads, the back mountain country roads. Um, that's just the way it is. It's not saying that your experience in Japan wouldn't be great without a car. It is. I had a great experience without a car, but when you got a car in Japan, it's totally different. You have the freedom to go where you want. It's great. In my opinion, I love it. I need a car now that I've had one and know how it is. So uh, my first car in Japan, 10 years after being here, was a Honda SMX. And at that time, I wasn't thinking about camping cars or anything like that. I was just thinking like, I need a car, SMX. If you remember those cars, those were really cool cars. It's one of my all time favorite cars, to be honest. Um, it had the back seat that laid down. It didn't lay down totally flat, but I did sleep in the car, but it had a bit of the hump. First time I climbed Mount Fuji, or no, it was the second time I climbed Mount Fuji. We drove the SMX, and back then, the road leading up to Station 5, you used to be able to drive your POVs, your private vehicles, up on that road. Now it's buses only. But before, the, that road leading up to Station 5 was all lined up with cars, and we got there at midnight, and it was already halfway, half the mountain was already taken. And people were outside partying. I mean, I don't know how they were partying because we're climbing Mount Fuji the next day, but I just wanted to go to sleep. But I, I did go out and walk around a bit and people were having campfires and stuff. So maybe that's why you can't go up the mountain anymore. But uh, back then it was a diff different atmosphere. We slept in the car that night. We didn't sleep great in the car, but we did sleep. And that was really what kicked off um, me thinking about camper vans. Like, this is really cool that you can drive somewhere, drive to a mountain. I know people have been doing this for millennia since cars were, but for me, it was like a, a new experience. Like, I, it was like a light bulb went off. Like, damn, you can go somewhere, just sleep in the car. You don't need a hotel. Um, this is really cool. But I held on to the SMX for quite a while, and I did camp in the SMX. But it wasn't exactly what I needed. So after the XMX, I got a, a Ford Explorer. That was cool, but it was a piece of junk because I bought it on the military base in which they called the Lemon Lot. So it didn't really last that long and I'm not a mechanic, so I couldn't really work on it. So I had that for about a year. I turned that in and then it hit me one day. You know what? I've always wanted a camping car. I got it. It's time. It's time to play. It's time to take the plunge. Let's do it. So we bought a Hi Ace GL, the biggest one, the 13 passenger van. It was already gutted, it was already converted, had a huge bed in the back, had a refrigerator, it was it had a live like a little living room, like a couch, a L couch set. The bed was always set up. It was so big that the bed was always set up in the back. I never had to do it, it was always made. You didn't have to fold anything down. It was it was it was beautiful. I I love that Hi Ace so much. But we were beginners. We didn't know anything about camper vans at the time. We didn't know about inverters or the, the power of the batteries in the back. We didn't know anything. We just went for it. It had a shower. It had a sink and everything in there. We just went for it. And we had some good times in it. I've had it. I had it for about a year. Had all my camping gear in there. Um, we did a lot of travels in that van. A lot of camping in that van. I think when I had that van, it was the best time of my life. So that was really the first one to kick it off. I had the Hannah the SMX, which you can camp and sleep in and camp in. I had the Ford Explorer, which I did do some camping in. But this was like a real camping car in, in the, the Japanese style, a converted van. Now, now van life and everything is everywhere, the Sprinter vans, but this is even before that. We're talking, might've got that in 2008, 2009 timeframe, something like that. So van life wasn't huge. I wasn't on YouTube. I mean, I was on YouTube, but I wasn't recording videos or anything. We were just traveling around. So I had the van for about a year. I remember the day of what, what happened when my car got stolen. It was a Friday morning. I was gonna go back to work. I was in the shower, it was about 6 a.m. I think my wife went to go walk the dog and she comes back and says, hey, where'd you park last night? And I'm like, where did I park? I parked in the in my parking spot. Um, I live in an apartment, a lot of apartments in Japan, you can't park right at your apartment. You usually gotta pay to get a parking spot. My parking spot's just a little bit down the road, but I could still see it from my balcony. 
I was like, I parked over there at the spot. And she said, no, the, it's not there. So I was like, what, what are you talking about? So I went out to the balcony, I looked, the van wasn't there. Obviously, I realized immediately, the car's been stolen, call the cops. So we called the cops, the cops came. The cops were no so nonchalant about it, I couldn't understand. They were just like, oh, you, oh, you got stolen, what was in the van, you know, like, what'd you have in there? And like, what did I have in there? My van is stolen. You know, forget about what I had in there. But actually what I had in there was a problem too, because I had all my camping equipment. I left everything in there, I had some money, like a couple hundred bucks in the um, freaking visor. Like for gas because it was a big van the gas cost a lot but i used to leave the money in there we're in japan i never thought about things getting stolen this is super you know safe country you don't stolen car like never crossed my mind so the cop the cops were there they're asking us what was in the van like trying to take an inventory kind of they weren't really listening they were just like yep high ace they get stolen all the time that's why they were no so nonchalant about it that high aces are like the number one stolen car in Japan at the time. I think now Land Cruisers are, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, at the time, and Hiaces do still get stolen. But they were like, yeah, I, I live in Yokohama, which is a, a port. So I think it was at that time they explained to us that they just drive them right down to the port, put them in shipping containers and send them to, this is their words, they send them to Dubai or the Philippines. Because it was a big 13 passenger van, they use them for ferrying around people they said politicians I don't know how they know that but the thing is my van wasn't a passenger van it didn't have seats in it maybe you didn't know when they broke in but anyway I was devastated heartbroken totally devastated that I lost my van I kept thinking oh my god I hope they find it but of course they they never found it they did end up catching the guy a year later for some reason. The guy stole something and I guess they had a big junkyard and they found our license plate in his trash heap. So the guy got caught, but by that time we already had our insurance and everything. So my car did get stolen. The only other time we ever had anything, problems in Japan, um, in my years in Japan, is one time my wife got her purse snatched by a bike she said bike she came knocking on the door like crying she's like the the bike they stole my they just snatched my bag i thought it, she meant bicycle so i like ran outside i thought i was going to catch the dude as as if i could catch a guy on a bike <laughs> anyway she meant motorbike and uh motor motorbike purse snatching is pretty prevalent in japan especially in my area because you got a lot of escape routes to the to the highways and stuff that's again this is what the cops said so that's really the only other time I had a problem in Japan is that my car got stolen. My wife's purse got stolen. I can't think of anything else. But after the big high ace GL, we got a replacement. We bought another high ace, but a, like a town version. It's not the same and no one would want to steal it. It was nice. It had bunk beds and it had a shower and everything like that. And it was cool, but it wasn't, it never, it didn't satisfy me as the way the other one did. Um, but it was great. High aces are great. If you're going to get a high ace, though, you got to be careful. Make sure. You know, I don't recommend it if you have an apartment. Um, when I got my new high ace, we put kill switches in it, like secret switches, so the power wouldn't turn on. I was, like, so nervous. I even bought, like, a steering wheel lock thing and a little lock that goes on the. But eh, after a few months, you're like, this is a lot of work. i got to do all these locks and stuff like that. I ended up not doing it. But I, I knew no one wanted to steal my van anyway. But... My, did, my journey did continue in the camping car world. When I came back to Japan after three years of Maryland, I did get the Subaru Domingo, which you might have saw the videos. If you're not, you should check them out. I love the Subaru Domingo. The thing is, I'm not a mechanic. So it, the thing was, it was always breaking down. It was old, it was 1999 um, van. When we bought it, it only had like 30,000, 35,000 miles on it. It's because the old owner, it just they didn't drive it. It just sat there. I think it was just a surf van that maybe they used in the summertime or something. That's my estimation because why did it have so low mileage? But since it sat, you know, a lot of it got rusted and maybe corroded. And it, it just, it was just too much of a headache for me. You have to be a mechanic to own that thing. So we got rid of it. Now I got this van. Um, 
it's small, but as you can see, it does this great. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking this van. It's, it's easy to drive, obviously, it's flipping U-turn, like, it's so easy, it's a turbo. Um, it's not a four-wheel drive like my Subaru Domingo was. That's a little bummer, but it's okay. I'm, I'm really liking it. I mean, as you might've saw in my other video, I got a speeding ticket already, so it goes fast. Not that I should be going fast. In fact, I'm not going fast anymore since that speeding ticket. But I'm just remaking this van now. I, I, I've only had it a couple months. I put this table in here. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a work in progress, but I'm really liking this. This is a Nissan Clipper NV100. You don't see many NV100s. They're mostly like a, a worker vans, like construction workers and stuff. I've been looking around for Nissan Clipper, like other campers, and I haven't found anything. I see the, the NV200, which is the bigger version. There's a lot of campers in that, but the NV100, I think I'm the only one. I don't know why, uh, but it worked out great. Like, I, I, I really like it. It's wide enough for two people to sleep. And uh, I mean, ideally one person, but you can sleep two people. We've done it. We slept two, two people in here and my dog. So I'm digging the van. That's the history of my camper van life here in Japan. Not camper van life, just my uh, little camper van in Japan. We'll call it that. But uh, we don't like to get hotels. We like to travel places and sleep at Michinoeki's, the roadside stations, or uh, go. You, when you have a car like a camper van, you just have the freedom to go where you want. You don't need a hotel. You sleep in the van, uh, and it works out great. But this one, this one, since I just got it, it's a work in progress. And this talking head video, even though I totally rambled, I just wanted to tell you about the time my car got stolen in Japan. It does happen. Be safe. If you have, if you have a high ace. Don't be blind like I did and didn't know anything and didn't expect it. The dealer didn't tell us anything about it. And then when we went back to the dealer to buy a new car, he was like, oh yeah, they, they get stolen all the time. Like, why didn't you tell us before, you son of a... <laughs> Not that it's his fault, but he could have mentioned it. But the dealer's the one who put in the kill switches for us on the new van, so it's cool. But let me tell you, when I got back to Japan, I didn't go back to that dealer. I still kind of hold a grudge from him. So anyway, I guess I'll wrap this video up. Uh, eat my little cake, and I, I hope you enjoyed this this video. Sayonara.